All right, uh, members of the House of Representatives, dear, yeah, I know expressing and sharing their thoughts as regards uh, the state of the economy and the planned protest over the hardship that is ongoing that Nigerians are feeling. I have a public affairs analyst uh, all the way from Yola in Adamawa State, Martin Yanisam Dixon, to make sense out of all that has happened in the past 24 hours uh, that the minimum wage of 70,000 naira and other economic martyrs. Thanks for joining me, Martin. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Uh, after much ado, as it were, the federal government and the labor unions agreed to a minimum wage of 70,000 naira. First off, did you see that coming after all of um, the hues and cry and after all the, the, the strike that uh, we had and all the negotiations back and forth? How do you, uh, how do you think about what's your reason? Uh, I mean, sorry, what are your thoughts concerning all of that? Well, uh, to start with, uh, it came actually as a surprise that uh, labor is able to settle for, for that amount. Uh, looking at the, the, the way it started and then the demands that labor had put forward. Oh. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the difference and the gap, uh, you started a negotiation from 650,000 naira, and then uh, he ended up with 70,000. And uh, at the time when labor was pegging it at 250,000 naira, uh, I was actually thinking that uh, the minimum legal level plan really be able to ground was going to be about a hundred and hundred and twenty thousand naira. Mm. But then surprisingly, uh, labor had been able to drastically shift grounds and settle for us. Uh, let me uh, use board in court, low has seventy thousand. Mm. Um, uh, and then one other reason that labor was given is that uh, according to uh, the NLC chairman, Adero, is that there are promissory notes, uh, uh, promissory statements that was made by the president. And that was why they agreed for 70,000 naira monthly. But I think this is not where the real issue is. Mm. Where the real issue lies, uh, it is in the economy itself. It is in the, the projection and then the, the progressive mindset to be able to arrest the down a world move of, of the downward and steep low of the economy and then to see how to be able to mitigate inflation mm. and these are issues because uh, if these issues are not really addressed even True. if we settle for 500,000 naira monthly uh, as minimum wage it's not going to solve the issue people mm. are still going to face a serious hardships and very, very drastic situations that uh, cannot be contained with, just like we're facing now. So the real issues have not been addressed. And I've not heard the label uh, in recent times talking about how to address this uh, economic downturn. And this is where mm. the whole nation needs to focus on and see how we can provide solutions. Okay, so in your opinion, uh, the first thing, the cat uh, um, should be put, or the horse should be put before the cat, as it is. Because if you look at it right now, you know, the is inflation is a very, uh, very, very big issue right now, which is over 30%. Uh, yeah. but, 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 but let's even still go back to the minimum wage uh, and uh, talk about, uh, you know, what the other issues are for instance a state government over time have talked about them um, how they might not be able some states have said that they might not be able to meet you know that minimum wage organized uh, uh, private sector also shared its own uh, you know concern over time do you really see that uh, yeah. as workable because uh, even at the 30,000 minimum wage some states were still owing salaries now, th there are quite an array of issues that uh, is getting us to this kind of situation. And um, th that is why I said in the first time, and I keep emphasizing this, as long as we don't address the real issues, we keep going around the cycle uh, yeah. e every now and then. Um, you see, the situation with the state governments is that uh, as much as Nigeria operates a mono economy, the state governments also keyed into that kind of trend to also uh, rely on that mono economy for everything that the state government gets. Yeah. No state government, uh, variably, um, probably ac ac except uh, maybe Lagos, uh, Kano and a few other states, that have been able to be innovative in creating a means where they can generate revenue and then see that they are sustainable. If you look at agriculture, for instance, it is one viable sector that a lot of states in Nigeria will be able to key into 
and have an internally generated revenue that can sustain those states. They do find out that the state governors just relax and labor because mm. uh, as far as they're concerned, the handout is going to come from the federal government at the end of the month when they share the proceeds from, from the sale of oil. And it has dampened and, and caused the innovative and the creative mind of those state governments, Nigerians at those state level to, to be dampened. And no creativity, no innovation. There is nothing that is put in place to be able to generate revenue. And as long as this keeps happening, the state governments will keep telling you that they cannot pay the salaries. This is an addition to the kind of massive corruption that happens at, 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 at the sub-nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, you find out that in most states, uh, the kind of projects that have been executed are projects that are going to get money back in the pocket of the governors. So to say, allegedly, but then there are signs that this is, these are what is happening. Uh, these are the things that are happening. They, they, you find out that sometimes people-oriented projects that affect directly the life of the people are not being carried out a massive quantum, just like uh, in, in, in construction of flyovers and roads. Sometimes we begin to ask the questions, is this the only thing that state governors are elected to do, to construct flyovers and build roads? You oh. see, so these are the issues. Then when you look at the organized private sector, what is affecting the private sector, it is the, is the economy. Oh. The, the, there is no conducive environment to be able to have a sustainable business that will generate income for you over time that you can rely on for growth and then be able to take care of uh, your, your staff and pay people who are experts, uh, pay people who have knowledge and experience in those fields. So for as long as those companies do not have uh, those conducive environments, they will keep telling you that they cannot because they have made profit. You look oh. at electricity, charge hiking. Is it the, the, the diesel that is expensive and is not available at all times? So how, do, how does production become sustainable in an economy like this? And how do companies and investors come and make profit? So these are issues that need to be addressed until we are able to look at these things critically and proper solutions. We will begin to go around the same cycle and look at uh, petroleum products, for instance. Mm. Someone was making a joke just uh, a few days ago that we're in a country where uh, at, at the time we we're exporting uh, crude and then importing uh, petroleum products. Mm. But now we got ourselves to a position where a, a private uh, uh, refinery has been constructed and that private refinery is importing crude. <laughs> and at this time, uh, mm. in to the petroleum products that we're importing, mm. uh, that we're exporting. So these are issues that we have to critically look at. As long as uh, the price of fuel is high, the electricity tariff is high, there, there are no incentives for, for business to thrive, then our economy will continue to gain on the ground and people will continue not to get to be paid what they should put in. And this, these are the reasons why people look outside the country, it's better to just move out and mm. see where things are working. Mm. And then these are issues that are acceptable to be able to put their energy okay. and to be able to see because as long as they keep, they will keep demanding for higher wages true the, the prices of food are going high the, the 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 basic necessities of life are not affordable so after three years labor will come back and tell you that they needed another five hundred thousand naira as as minimum wage. I, I, I was going to address because that. I was going to address that, Martin. Yeah, sorry, I just had to butt in here yeah, because you talked about uh, more demand yeah. over time. One of the fallout of the meeting of yesterday is that uh, there was an agreement uh, that um, the federal government will be reviewing this minimum wage um, every three years. Uh, what do you really think about that? Would it really address um, these issues of um, high inflation over time? Because if you, if you agree with me, uh, in our laws, uh, this minimum wage is supposed to be reviewed every five years, but over time it has not been done. And uh, if inflation has skyrocketed over time and within that five years. So do you think uh, if there were like um, uh, a regular review of uh, this uh, minimum wage or issues generally concerning labor and all of that, it will actually help in stemming um, this um, tide? No, it, it will help in just one area. And the area it will help is that labor will not go on strike because uh, okay. if the, that is if the review successfully takes place silently, okay. then you find a situation where we, we might have been able to solve one problem. That means shutting down the economy by the National Labor Congress. Oh. Uh, this is one thing that it is going to achieve. But then, until we're able to have this uh, review in, three, in every three years, running concurrently with 
drastic measures in addressing the economy, mm. then we'll be able to have some form of stability. But okay. as long as we just focus on, okay, let it be reviewed every three years, then you find out that at the end of the day, what you're able to do is the, the government will just keep focusing on how to appease the NLC. And then, and then we are not addressing the real issues. Because af after every two years, the third year, you begin mm. to think of how do we appease a level. So let's just do right. uh, a, a review and, and then see how they will not be able to go on strike. These are issues. But then one thing that worried me about the reports that came in yesterday yeah. was uh, the, the statements by the, the, the president of the NLC that says the president says he can give 250 if you will increase the pump price of petrol. This is very, very disturbing. Mm. These are things that we have to look at. Must we always look at increasing the pump price of petrol to achieve stability in the economy or mm. to be able to make government functions to run smoothly? Mm. How much have we, what effort have we been able to make to ensure that these petroleum products are available, that our refineries are working? Even the private refinery that we have now mm. is not producing and, 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 and injecting uh, the quantity of fuel in the in, in the society so that the prices can crash. We all know that demand and supply is the basic is the basic of foundation of yes. economics. Mm. So as long as we are not being able to 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 push uh, uh, supply to be able to curtail uh, demand, demand and then yes. stabilize the prices, mm. these are things that we will we'll keep talking about every day. All right. Why will the president say that? If labor is going to receive 250,000 naira as minimum wage, then the pump price of petroleum have to be increased. Mm. Are there no other strategies and 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 ways that but, we could we could follow to yeah. ensure that the pump price of petroleum is not increased? Increased because at the end of so the day, when, when it's increased, it actually affects it's a rippling effect and it affects every other sector of the economy. But I want us to we'll be we'll be, we'll be having in, in, in inflation, inflation goes up to probably. 50 60 percent because now he's at 40 point something if that's the true picture but then another uh, as we begin to round off now very quickly uh, martin now another issue that was uh, another report that came in yesterday was uh, the house of representatives uh, uh promising uh, to reduce their salaries by 50 percent just to uh, will i say to mitigate against uh, the economic hardship that we've had and uh, the protest that um nationwide protest that is being planned what are your thoughts and uh, shouldn't that be like a general call to uh, for government to just uh, reduce the cost of governance as we round up martin general call for government to reduce the cost of governance over six months i learned that they are, all, they, are <laughs> they, they promise to reduce that just for six months <laughs> so what effect what effect is that going to have on the economy mm. it is not a perpetual reduction in their salaries okay. so if it is going to be a reduction across board the, the members of House of Reps, the senators, and see, you, you can reduce the, 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 the salaries even to 20%. But as long as they keep receiving those bogus allowances yes. and those bogus incentives, mm. it is not going to make any meaning. So if there is going to be anything, I expected that they, they probably would have been, been talking about an, uh, enacting a bill that would be assented into law to reduce allowances and cost of governance right from the presidency to mm. the judiciary up to the uh, national assembly this is when we will know that yes something good or something real is happening but this is just cosmetic to appease uh probably those planning the protests out there uh, right. that uh we are doing something we feel your pain and then it is only temporary for six months after six months they go back to their normal salaries mm. All right, thank you, Martin. Uh, we just have to uh, drop um, the anchor for today. That's as much as we can take. We just hope that all of these issues would really be addressed, specifically addressing the issues that affect uh, the inflation uh, rate and um, all of that uh, interest rate and all that. Because at the end of the day, if salaries are being increased by the day and those issues at uh, the macroeconomic levels are not addressed, uh, it will be like just uh, you know, backing up the wrong tree. Thank you so much, Martin, for your thoughts yeah. uh, this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I sincerely appreciate it. All right. Well, that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for being around. See you again next time. Bye for now.